This buoy measures 20 environmental parameters every 10 minutes, sends them directly to a website. This is wind speed, wind direction, wind gusts. Uh, we have incident solar radiation, air temperature, relative humidity. Uh, this is our cell phone antenna, navigational beacon on this side. All the electronics are in the box on top. And then internal to the buoy is the directional wave sensor along with water temperature and then temperature at eight additional depths below the surface all the way to the bottom. going out to deploy a glass buoy, that's the Great Lakes Observing System buoy, it's the MTU buoy. It's a 600 pound buoy designed by uh, Guy Meadows at the University of Michigan and he's up here helping us uh, deploy it. And it will measure how many variables? 20. 20, 20 variables out there, uh, meteorological variables from the top portion of the buoy and then it has an underwater component too that measures uh, temperature, conductivity. To be determined we're going to add some additional probes on it. And this is the test. Uh, we're going to put it out north entry about two miles out, uh, north northeast of uh, north entry in about 22 meters of water and test how it does in Lake Superior. Now it's an NDBC buoy, and so the data stream from it can be publicly accessed. So on, uh, you can Google it and uh, call up the data as part of the NDBC uh, program. It, it's designed to give us detailed in, uh, measurements of uh, weather and of temperature. Part of the, it has about three functions. One of it is to enhance the coastal portion of NOAA's uh, monitoring program. And NOAA has a whole series of deep water buoys which you can also access the information from. This is the beginning of an extensive coastal series. So it's, in, it's near shore and the near shore region is much more sensitive to variables uh, such as water temperature that associate with global climate change. So one thing is to monitor in detail variables to test whether or not we're getting uh, effects from global climate change. Well, it's really large ecosystem research on, on Lake Superior. It's being really extending the program. We are having a construction of a new building. Uh, that's a Great Lakes uh, Research Center here at uh, Michigan Tech, and this will be one of the major programs. Yeah. And it'll be coupled with uh, remote sensing, too, and the global climate change that we're looking at. One, one thing is the increase in temperature in the near shore that is four to two to four degrees centigrade increase here. And this is one of the largest increases in the Great Lakes. Even though it's the northern lake, it's one of the more sensitive. Uh, it's thrown off fish spawning. Uh, I mean, the uh, warm periods that we've got in the last 15 years uh, are really uh, making it difficult for the fish to cue in on what's the right time to move in to spawn. So that might be a cool picture if you're over where those guys are. Okay. And that'll be the marker. Then they'll drop the big weight right on top of this marker. Ready, guys. Ready. One.
Yeah, yeah we can mention everything. Yeah. So which feels flat? Good location, Charlie. That's the boat with the weight for the buoy. I got 20.4 meters, and I, it's probably another meter, uh, let's see, that would be actually another meter deeper. Yeah. Get the picture! Somebody get the picture! Uh, Charlie, you gotta get out Can you put one of the divers on? I'd like to know what they found out. Thank you. Okay, and the uh, the chain was was free, and the line not pinched on the chain or anything. All right. Well, thanks. You guys did a great job. Tell the captain what a good job, and we'll see you back. Very good. No problem. Good shot. 